A major part of the project and a major part of the design uh, involves the use of, uh, of local resources, link workers in the communities, peer educators uh, in the context of sex work programs. Uh, we found it uh, in many cases highly effective to get somebody who was otherwise a little bit outcast or maybe a lot outcast from the community, whether it be a widow or the, the child of a Devadasi or somebody who was uh, living with HIV AIDS. Many of our link workers come from that kind of a background. The link workers were from uh, the villages, so they understood the local uh, realities, they understood the local issues and concerns, they understood the local sensitivity. ಮಕ್ಕಳು ಸಮಾನ ಪಟ್ಟಂಗ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಈಗ ಈ ನಮ್ಮ ಗ್ರಾಮೀಣ ಮಟ್ಟದಲ್ಲಿ ಮಹಿಳೆಯರು ನಾಲ್ಕು ಗೋಡೆ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಇರುವಂತ ಮಹಿಳೆಯರು ಅವರು ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಹೊರಗಡೆ ಹೋಗಿ ಯಾವ ವಿಷಯದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಂಡಿರಂಗಿಲ್ಲ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ನಾವು ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಂದು ಮನೆ ಮನೆಗೂ ಭೇಟಿಯಾಗಿ ಮಹಿಳೆಯರಲ್ಲಿ ಇದರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಜಾಗೃತಿ ಮೂಡಿಸಬೇಕು ಅವರು ಕೂಡ ತಮ್ಮ ಗಂಡಂದಿರು ಹೊರಗಡೆ ಅದು ಹೋದ್ರೆ ಈ ರೀತಿ ನೀವು ಇರಬೇಕು ಈ ರೀತಿ ಜೀವನ ಕಾಪಾಡ್ಕೋಬೇಕು ನೀವು ಆರೋಗ್ಯವಂತರಾಗಿರಬೇಕು ನಾವು ಆರೋಗ್ಯವಂತರಾಗಿರಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಮೊದಲು ಇದನ್ನು ಮಹಿಳೆಯರಲ್ಲೇ ಈ ತಿಳುವಳಿಕೆಯನ್ನು ಕೊಟ್ಟರೆ ಆ ಮಹಿಳೆ ಆದೊಂದು ಕುಟುಂಬವನ್ನು ಸದೃಢವಾದಂಥ ಕುಟುಂಬವನ್ನು ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ತಾಳಲ್ಲ ಅಂಥೇಳಿ ಮನೆ ಮನೆ ಭೇಟಿಯಾಗಿ ಮಹಿಳೆಯರಿಗೆ ಯಾವುದೂ ನಾ ಮುಲಾಜು ಹಿಡಿಲಾರ್ದನ್ನು ಮನಸ್ಸು ಬಿಚ್ಚಿ ಅವರೊಂದಿಗೆ ಮಾತನಾಡ್ತೀನಿ for any community based process to work uh, you need to involve the community you need to involve the community from uh, understanding the situation from designing and implementing the program and uh, um, link worker program is uh, a step towards this this community ownership
So under uh, the NACP 3, we adapted the Bagel Court experience of link workers and we see great power because what we are now designing, designed uh, for implementation is that there will be two young uh, people, typically in the age group of 19 to 23, and they will be located in places where the vulnerability to the HIV infection is high. So it is in these uh, areas that these young people will be going out into the community doing a risk mapping of the community itself, identifying those who are high risk, work with them and give them messages of primary prevention and also empower them with information, knowledge and services. The second important thing that we thought the link workers could really channelize is to reach out to young people, uh, the youth, and provide them with the necessary uh, youth-friendly clinics, tell them about sexuality, tell them about, uh, resolve many of the doubts about sexuality, which is a big gap in our health services. I think the Bagal Court experience has been a wonderful experience of how to reach out in a very strategic manner the rural populations, um, giving us both the depth in terms of penetrating into rural areas, uh, while at the same time giving us the space to see that we don't dilute the message by just about spreading it too thin into uh, every family, but strategically identifying those with whom we want to work need to work so that there is a certain urgency in who we contact and who we talk to and who we uh, protect uh, from this infection. So I think I'm very positive and I do hope that this experiment will take us to achieve our goals that we've set for ourselves. Welcome to Bagel Court Learning Site. My name is Parinita Bhattacharji. I'm the Director of Programs for Karnataka Health Promotion Trust. In this session, we are going to focus on the link worker model in Bagel Court. In the previous session, we discussed the guiding principles that shape this project in detail. It was important to translate each of these principles into day-to-day -day practices. You'll ask why? because from day one, we had to develop processes that were enduring and sustainable. To do this, we had to win the trust and confidence of the community, catalyze them to take ownership, adopt behavior change, and do whatever it takes to reduce their risks and vulnerabilities to HIV and STI. To make all this happen, we had to ensure a continuum of services for STI and HIV, prevention to care, and support and whenever possible treatment. Most importantly, we had to create a supportive environment, reach out to all the gatekeepers, decision makers, community leaders, and motivate them to lead from the front. This module seeks to trace the challenging processes and share with learners some vital lessons we learned both from successes and failures. What were the early challenges that the project faced? To begin with, the community was not quite ready to confront the problem in a rational and positive manner. They were looking for a solution, but something that was ready-made and not necessarily something that they had to strive for. It was clear to the project that they had to persuade and convince the community to act in a decisive, long-term and cohesive manner. This was a testing time for the project. The community was desperate. It was not only raising many questions and expressing concerns, but was also challenging our project team to provide instant solutions for complex problems. We refused to rise to the bait. We were clear that there were no shortcuts. We would have to begin with assessments 
and much of it had to be done with support and participation of the community. This unquestionable faith in the guiding principles helped to establish the right equation between the project and the community. It is important to retrace the beginnings and understand the many small and big challenges that they faced as this could occur in any context. The video on early challenges traces this journey. It not only tells us very clearly about the challenges they faced, but also about the approaches that were adopted to ensure that a long-term view was taken to overcome the challenges.